help me in Jesus name Amen. um okay let me just we'll take it during the word can we take our confession before the, we hear the word of the Lord Amen. You guys are too quiet this morning. Should we uh, share the grace and go? I said amen. amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. amen. All right. Let's take our confession and we go right into the word of God. As I sit under the teaching of the word of God, I declare that my heart is a prepared ground to receive the living seed of the word of God. I am focused and do not permit any form of distraction or distortion. As the word comes forth, every need in my life is met. I receive revelation knowledge. I receive light for every dark area of my life. I receive the impartation of the spirit and grace of the word to be a doer. I pull down and destroy every stronghold and high thing in my mind. That will challenge or oppose the truth of the word of God I hear. I receive and believe the word I hear today as the truth of God. This word bears fruit in my life a hundredfold. As God confirms the word with miracles, wonders and signs in my life. Amen. Now before we pray just one thing. Um, we will be having a reception for those who are new in Hammer. I forgot to announce that. So please after the second service we'll have a reception that we are hosting so please i want to encourage everyone to wait behind if this is your first time or we've not really received you formally you would get to know more about the church have a one-on-one -on -one with me and then other things there will also be light refreshment in jesus name if you're also online you wish to join in please the um, uh, place will be open i think we'll do that on zoom so just send a request and then we can follow up on that amen. amen all right father as i go into your word i thank you because your word is spirit and life it will not return back void it will give seed to the soul and bread to the eater i stand today as a teacher of righteousness as the early reign of god and lord as i teach let my doctrine be like you let every grass receive the rain of the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, with this rain, let there be springing up from unlikely places of good things. The Bible says in Job chapter 14 verse 6, that even though a stalk of the tree is dead, buried in the earth, but at the scent of water it will sprout again. And Lord, as this scent of water comes forth, let there be a sprouting. In the name of Jesus, let this teaching also ripen the harvest. Let it cause it to be a hundredfold. Thank you because it's done. The Lord Jesus only is heard. The Lord Jesus only is glorified. The Lord Jesus only is seen. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. Let's pray that scripture while you're seated. Job chapter 14. Can we quickly turn there? Job chapter 14. And I want you to genuinely pray this prayer. Job chapter 14 from verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. A tree represents a human life. It says there is hope of a tree if it be cut down. So it means no matter what has happened, maybe they've cut down your hope, your expectations destroyed, delayed you, said there is still hope of that tree if it be cut down, that it will sprout again. It's, so to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. It doesn't matter what your situation is. Things are changing today. Amen. Things are changing for the better today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want you to declare things are changing for the better in my life. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell them things are changing for the better in my life. Now that last one, turn to another person and declare to them things are changing for the better in my life. In Jesus' name. 
that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. That means you will not stop producing new things. Tender branch. When a tree doesn't have a new branch, a tender branch, it will wither off. And where there is no tender branch, there will be no leaves and there will be no fruit. Now look at the next verse, verse 8. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, that means the matter has been long. It can be 500 years in your lineage. Nobody has smelt a rising. Nobody has reached certain stage. That's what it means here. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, become very old. He says, and the stalk thereof die in the ground. The upshoot has, is dead. Nothing to write home about. Now watch verse 9. It says, Yet through the scent of water, it will bud. Through the, when that issue perceives water, that means the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the word of God, he said it will bring forth, no matter how hopeless that situation, it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant i want you to pray this prayer i don't know the issues you came before god with you know some of us there are issues we don't even have words to put them together some of us have prayed and prayed and it seems as if prayer is not working some of us have waited and waited and waited and as if we are diminishing it looks as if this situation cannot be solved but the bible says through the scent of water you, the, whatever is the issue, it will perceive the scent of water today. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to pray, Lord, every stalk, every trick, waxing old, every impossible issue, let it perceive the scent of water in the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Whatever is an impossible issue in my life, whatever battle I faced today in this service, let it perceive let it be touched by the scent of water by the outpouring of your spirit by your word in the name of jesus can you pray that for yourself scent of water through the scent of water makuta libata are mashande whatever is the impossibility whatever is the difficulty Lord, let everything dead and dying in my life, in my destiny, in my health, in my home, let them perceive the scent of water and come forth to life and bring forth again. I will not die like this. I will not remain like this. I will not continue stinking. Kapateke. Every stagnant water in my life receive the scent of God's water. Every barren ground in my life receive the scent of God's water and bring forth abundantly. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty and the matchless name we have prayed and received. Some of us are still waking up. I say in Jesus mighty and the matchless name we've prayed and received. Amen. 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 We've started a series um, early this month. And this series doesn't just end today. You need enlargement. Any time in your life, always go back to it. It will work. It's not because we, we are ending it today. That enlargement has stopped or the word of God will not work. And today we are looking, as we draw the curtains on this series, on the sermon part one of Rainmakers. Tell your neighbor I'm a rainmaker. I'm a rainmaker. Tell the next person I am, a I am a rainmaker. You know why I tell you to tell people? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. You may not even know what you're doing, but it will work. 
Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So that's why I say, say it, because some of us may not say it after this. So I want to encourage you and make it a culture in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me quick, quickly give a summary, because I like doing that, to, so that we can be up to speed. I thought about the three tests of prosperity that you must pass on Wednesday. Test number one, test of absolute dependency on God. God brought them out from the land of Egypt where water was flowing on the ground. They can do irrigation to a land where if they have to have success because they are based, they were farmers and herders. So farmers and herders, they need rain and or water so god took them from the land of egypt where you don't have to care whether water falls or not to a land where only he can get water for them can we go to deuteronomy chapter 11 from verse 10 to verse 12 we'll find out there because of time we won't, i won't spend time on that but god took them to that land and the reason is that he wants them to depend absolutely and wholly on him and he has not changed in the new testament the prosperity God will give you that will take you away from him, he will not allow it to come to you. Do we understand what I'm saying? You may get it by yourself, but God will not give you. And the Bible says that it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow. The ones we get by ourselves will have, give us sorrow. Abraham, when he was still Abraham, made the same mistake. Genesis chapter 15. He went to go and get Ishmael. It was not God's blessing. God permitted it. And God told him, Ishmael, his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And that's what we are still suffering today. So God wanted to be the one to give them. So he tells them, I will give you rain in due season. And that due season are two seasons. When rain falls in the land of Israel, the early rain, and when the early rain falls, it falls for six months for them to prepare the ground and sow the seed. And then the latter rain, the latter rain for what they've sown, which has grown to ripen so that they can have plenty harvest. And I said, when the Lord Jesus gave the parable of the, of the sower and said some people had 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. The difference is that all the fields or the ground, which is the heart, where the seed was sown, we all brought forth, but the harvest was different. The difference was that some of them didn't wait for the latter rain. Patience, they lacked patience. So you can marry, but marry God's permissive will. And your destiny will be haunted. You can relocate, but you can end up being like the husband of Ruth. Permissive will of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and then perfect will of God. The perfect day is hundredfold. Are you getting what I'm saying? And it comes with patience. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Can we go to that quickly? Luke chapter 8 verse 15. This series, I've taught it so much that there is nothing left in me. I don't know how else to teach it. I've poured out everything I know. You see, prophecy does not work until you have put seed to the ground. Prophecy is rain. If you have not taught and you're prophesying over people, it will not work. You're deceiving them. You're practicing enchantment. So you notice that I don't prophesy until I've taught. And I've sown a lot of seedy seed in your life. If you, if you genuinely take this seed, with if your heart is good ground, you genuinely understand the seed of the word of God being planted. I can bet you, not long from now, people will not even recognize you because of the goodness of God on your life. And that will be somebody's testimony. Amen. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Luke 8, 15. But that on the good ground that they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it, did it. And then they brought forth fruit with patience. They brought forth a hundredfold with patience. So, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, so you hear the word of God, the seed is being sown. The prophecy goes forth. Now, you go and do it. Now, when you do it, don't expect to have results immediately. That's where many people are discouraged. Eh, I've done. Eh, I've done. It's possible the seed of the word impregnated you with an elephant. The miracle is like an elephant. Elephant, it takes 22 months for it to give birth. Somebody, the seed of the word of God impregnated them. Let me, let's be a human being. Human being takes nine months. So, nine months, somebody else have gotten testimony. I'm yet to get my own. Then I get offended. Does it make sense what we are saying? That's why he said, in an honest and good heart. So, you must pass the test of absolute dependency on God. And that means at God's time, God's ways, God's process, is all left in God's hand. The second test you must pass is the test of pruning. If you bear fruit, God will prune you. That means team from verse 1 to 2. So I tell people that work closely with me, I tell them the reward of good work is what? More work. Anybody that is not busy, watch them. God doesn't give them anything to do. If you watch the Bible, how God called people, he never called any idle person. They were doing something. They were doing something. It may not be that they are the best at it. It may not even be that it is the best at what they are doing. But everybody is doing something. Idleness does not prepare you for God's destiny for you. And there are no small places. David was in the bush, but keeping sheep, he was called there. Check everyone got called. They were doing something. And when, whenever the call of God to them was a call to be more. But start with something. Start where you are with what you have. There are no small places in destiny. And then the third test you must pass is the test of stewardship. Your money. Where your treasure is. There your heart is. Your money. If you're not faithful in tithing, forget. I, have, I mean, there are people God have given the mantle in this age for prosperity. And one of the things they have said is that prosperity does not come by prayer and fasting. Me, as a pastor, I've tasted it, I've seen it, and it is true. It comes by the practice of two kittens. Number one, the practice of seed time and harvest. That means I must sow a seed. I must put something on the ground. No farmer goes to his farm and starts speaking in tongues and starts crying. They prepare the ground and put seed in it. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. And then the second thing, under that law of prosperity, you want to prosper. And many people don't, many people actually, they can put seed in the ground, but they fail the second one. And that second one, we find the second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Believe the Lord your God. You'll be established. But no prosperity until you believe the prophet he has sent to you. So we can conclude that prophets are for your profit. Who is a prophet? The one God has sent to you with a message from him. As I'm standing here this morning, I'm a prophet over your life. Believe the Lord your God, you'll be established. Celebrate with them. And then the last one, the test of stewardship, especially your money. Being faithful 
in your covenant obligations. There are those God knows that if he gives them what they are asking for, it will destroy them. So he will allow, he will withhold that blessing until they grow. No amount of fasting, no amount of prophecy, no amount of going to mountain will give that thing to them. And with the illustration of Rachel, the second wife or the first, supposedly first wife of Jacob, she was praying and fasting for a child. Her heart was not right. She was competing with her sister. And God said, you are an envious. The Bible said, because she was envious, God closed her womb. Their wombs of businesses, destinies, careers got closed. Why? Their heart is wrong. They have not grown. Does it make sense what we are saying? So we looked at that last Wednesday. But remember where we started from the three factors of fruitfulness. If you want to be fruitful, number one, the good ground, your heart. Number two, the seed, the word of God. Never just look at the word of God. When you come to church, don't just come to church so that pastor will not be angry, so to feel like church. No, you are coming to get seed. You know why we do praise and worship before we hear the word? Praise and worship is like rain. It softens our heart. Just notice something. Every service you join and you didn't join praise and worship, check how the word will be when it's being preached. The good ground, the heart, my heart. The seed, the word of God. And then the rain, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If my heart is good, the seed of the word of God is always good. But until God sends rain, there will be no increase. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. Apostle Paul wrote, I Paul watered, Apollos, I Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. He said, neither him that planted nor him that watered is anything, but God who gave the increase. Does it make sense what we are saying? So today, I want to um, stay more on that increase part because without rain, there will be no increase. And that rain, God sends it. And I want to show us how we can be rainmakers. Amen? Amen? The third factor is rain. Rain is, stands for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing is created. When you declare and the Holy Spirit does not move, there will be no production. Does it make sense what we are saying? Psalm 33, please. Verse 6. Psalm 33, verse 6. Can you go to the Holman Christian Standard Bible? The heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars and by the breath, breath of his mouth. Breath, he breatheth. What is that breath? The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Now, go again to um, John chapter 6, verse 63. Now, watch something here. Watch something, everyone. You can't speak without breathing. Can you try that? Just try. I know as I'm saying it now, some people tried it. You can't speak without breathing. So, every time God speaks, not just the word, but the spirit goes forth with it. Does it make sense? Now look at John chapter 6 verse 63. The Lord Jesus speaking. The spirit is the one who gives life. So everything is dead until the Holy Spirit gets involved. The spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words have spoken to you. The words have spoken to you. They are spirit and life. So the 
nothing is created. If you want to create something, you need the Holy Spirit. Now, one more example because a lot of people are looking at me somehow. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1. The value of the dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me all around them to inspect so that there would be no form of magic. You see it full of bones, dry bones. So these hosts of army had been long dead. He led me all around them and there were a great many of them on the surface of the valley and they were very dry, very dry, like most of our lives, most of the situations, most of the issues, very dry. Then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy concerning these bones. So say something. Prophesy means you must open your mouth and say something. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue. That means what the tongue produces. Prophesy concerning these dry bones. So God tells you the word you've received... Go to that thing that is not working and speak to it. Does it make sense to speak to dry bones? It doesn't. But God says that's the way it will live. Prophesy to these dry bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That means you must have heard something from the Lord. That's why I taught you, I said, when you come to church, you come for your seed, for what you're facing. Somebody was telling me, was it last Sunday or so? Where he used in the morning devotion, as he came to church, that was the same place I was emphasizing. That was his word. God, the, through the Spirit, was confirming that word to the person. Prophesy concerning these dry bones, say to them, dry bones, hear, because they won't hear your word. That's why you have to hear. And how do I know which one is the word God has given me? The one that quickens me, that comes alive. I can say many things, but this one, pastor said, is the word that quickened me. In this situation, I can see how to do the thing. I can feel hope. I can feel faith as the word comes. That's my word. That's the quickened word. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. This is what the Lord God says to these dry bones. I will cause breath. To enter you and you will leave. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you, and cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I'm God. You go to your business and say, This business, you will begin to prosper. They hear. Do you know they hear? Do you know they hear? Do you know the walls, the plants in your life, in your environment, they hear? Do you know that? And they will respond. Peter didn't catch fish. Luke chapter 5. The Lord Jesus, after he preached, he told him, cast the net on the right side. When, the, when he spoke, because the, all the fish in the river, they came to that side to stay. Does it make sense what we are saying? Verse 7, so I prophesied as I had been commanded. Not what I like. As I've been, if you want result, declare what has been given you. You are reading a scripture. Something is particular one jumps out at you. That is the seed. That is the word. That is the sword you need. Declare it. You declare it you, with all your heart, you must see instant result. So I prophesied, I've been commanded, as I've been commanded, while I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. So things were coming back to life. The bones came together, bone to bone. Who did this? Was this Ezekiel that prophesied? No. The word was doing its work. And I decree that as you prophesy this week, bones will come to bones. In the name of Jesus. I thought I would hear a louder amen. 
Verse 8. As I looked, tendons appeared on them. Flesh grew. And skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. How did it come about? The man said something, what God said. Then look at the next one. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, to the spirit. Prophesy, son of man, say to it. That means without your speaking, there is no moving of the spirit. Say to it, this is what the Lord God says. Breath, come from the four winds and breath into the slain so that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied again as he commanded me. The breath entered them. The spirit entered them. And they came to life and stood on their feet. A vast army. Whatever dry bone that is in your life is waiting for you to say something. Why many of us are not seeing results when we say is what we've been dealing with. The ground. Your heart. Offense. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Doubt. Now are you sure this thing will work? This thing this man is saying. A pastor said it, now nah, he's a pastor. Me, I'm not up to that level. Doubt. Unbelief. God also sees your heart and says, if this money enters this man's hand, I will not see him in church again. God will not give you what will destroy you. Does it make sense what we are saying? So we tell that the tongues, remove those things. That's repentance. You remove the tongues. The desires, the lost, you remove them. You're not competing with anybody. No, let me tell you some one secret about this church, M1 Christian Center. I made a vow to God when He called me to start it. See, you said the mandate, the mandate you gave us is to empower destinies for godly influence. I say, Lord, anybody you empower, and that empowerment does not make them to be godly influence, withdraw it, including me, including this church. God cannot bless you and the next place you go to club, you don't come to church again, you know. The pastor is too big to correct you, you're not growing, no. Uh, you, he, I'm telling you, he will, I will have told, he told him. Please put back scripture. So that's why many of us will prophesy, remove, why is, God doesn't have problem. What is he doing with the blessings in heaven? Amen. Amen. Are you getting something from this? Yes, sir. We we'll need to know how to make to be rainmakers. This is the fundamental thing you need to know. Number one, the world is a wilderness. Not the earth, but the world. I've taught us the difference between the earth and the world. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The earth represents the land, the ocean, the sky. The world represents the people and their way of life. They are not the same thing. The world is a wilderness and in wilderness without rain you will die. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 17. When God made this earth, it was not a wilderness. Satan turned it to a wilderness. At the fall of Adam. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 17. Isaiah 14 verse 17. Who turned the world into a wilderness? The world, not the earth, the world. People's way of life. In the wilderness, it's like a desert. Every, things don't grow. No water for sustenance. Spiritually speaking, the world is a wilderness. And so you live in this world, you need to know how to draw water into your life for your sustenance. And how do we do that? Are you with me this morning? Psalm 84. Before you go to Psalm 84, let's just look at this scripture. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19. 
talking of the world being a wilderness, the Bible says that 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. That, the other verse, please, the other um, translation. We know that we are of God. Holman Christian Standard, please. We know that we are of God and the whole world is under the sway of the wicked evil one, the wicked one. Who is that? Satan. This is New Testament. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 10 verse 10, his ministry, his work is to kill, to steal, to kill and to destroy. So we are living here, we need to know how to draw water, to make rain fall, even in the wilderness. If not, we die in the wilderness. And by the mercy of God, through the Holy Spirit, he has given us insights in his world how to do that. So let's go to Psalm 84. From verse 1 to verse 7. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord of hosts. I long and yearn for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Even a sparrow finds a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she places her young near your altars. Lord of hosts, my king and my God. Before I continue, you know, sparrows and all these things are small birds. You know, they are more intelligent than most human beings. Say, so they, out of all the places, they look for God's house to put their nest. When you come to my house, the light in front the beds there we are struggling as if they paid rent <laughs> you remove the nest they come back again is this scripture that keeps coming to my mind they are following the anointing are you getting what i'm saying so if birds can be this sensitive and intelligent out of all the places in israel they go to god's house to build their nest. Verse 4. How happy are those who reside in your house, who dwell in your house. Not come and go when it's convenient. Give, me, give all kinds of excuses. You will, let me tell you, nothing grows until it's planted. You don't serve God because it's convenient. You serve him because it is commanded. Those that make excuses never make it. Like why you don't come to church today? It rained. Why didn't you come to church today? No money. But you ate. You went out. Early. Happy are the people. That's where I'm going. Whose strength is in you. Whose heart is set on a pilgrimage. Verse 6. Watch these people. Their strength is in God. And then as they pass through the valley of Baca, that valley of Baca there says, means dryness. Where there is dryness, as they, and the world is a wilderness, the world is a dry place. As they pass through that valley, they make it a source of spring water. They are not dependent on the climate, on the weather. As they, why? Because there is something in their heart. Does it make sense what we are saying? We started this church in the middle of a recession. It's based on this scripture. Drawing water, that means drawing sustenance source and prosperity as you need it, where you need it, when you need it. Somebody is going home with something today. As they pass through that valley of Becca, it's a valley, not a mountain. It's a dry place. But as they pass through it, they, not God, that's where we get the title Rainmakers. They make it a spring of a source of spring water. Even the autumn rain will cover it with blessings. Please go to King James. Verse 6 first. No, start from 5, please. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. In whose heart the ground are the ways of the strength of God. 
in whose heart are the ways of the strength of God. Watch what they do. Verse 6. This man who passing through the valley of dryness make it a well of water. By their presence water comes. The rain, they command the rain to come and cause it to be pulled. Now, I want to tell you that this has been the order of God's people, Abinishu. Jacob went to Laban. Laban was trying, was, he, was well off, but he was uh, struggling a bit. When Jacob came and stayed with him, everything he had grew. He drew rain. And Laban said, I've learned by experience that God has blessed me because of your presence. If you are in a, is here you a believer, and you are in a place and growth is not taking place, some, there is something you are not doing well. And today that thing is changing. Amen. Nothing will die in your hands again. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nothing will remain small in your hands again. Amen. Some of us we say because I'm not paid well. No, it's not about payment. Leave that. Laban didn't pay Jacob well. But God rewarded him. Nothing remains more. See, I have learned by experience. Because I knew how I was when you came. That's why when people come to Hermon, they stay one mo three months, six months, one year, two years. Nothing is changing. Something is not right with them. It's not our testimony here. Because what we teach people is the strength of God in your heart. So you know how to draw water even in the worst of seasons. Does it make sense what we're saying? Passing through the valley of Baker, make it a well. That's what Jacob did in the house of Laban. Look at Joseph. Everywhere he went, he went to Potiphar's house. Potiphar saw that everything this man touched when he came in has changed, has multiplied. So God is with this man. So he left everything. You know why your bosses are careful? Because things are not growing in your hands. That's why they are careful. From Potiphar's house, Joseph moved to prison. When he got there, the keeper of the prison said, Ah, these guys, there's something, there's something off about him. Everything is growing. Then finally, to Pharaoh. Came to Pharaoh and stood before him. It was Joseph that made one person, that made not just Pharaoh, but the whole nation rich by this. In whose heart are the ways of the strength of God. Something is coming into your heart today. In the name of Jesus. You will no longer be stranded. You will no longer remain in that dry place. In Jesus mighty and matchless name. Now let me tell you something. Because I have so much to say about this. But we don't have time for that. Let me tell you, let me teach you something that will help you. In whose heart are the ways of God? There are four key ways of getting intimate with God. The first two we saw in, we will see in Psalm 103, verse 7. Psalm 103, verse 7. Because of time, I will not go into the other two. But this two we see in Psalm 103, verse 7. He made his ways known unto Moses. God made his ways known unto Moses. Then his acts, his demonstrations to the children of Israel. There are not two things. There are the acts of God. Miracles, signs and wonders. But you don't know how to walk it. That's why the Lord Jesus told Peter, follow me. This fish you got is small. I will make you. That's God's primary objective for our lives. I will make you a fisher of men. When you follow me, you will command what I command. So there are the acts of God, miracles, signs, and what, and a lot of people are running to it, but that's the lowest form of knowing God. 
how do we know look at what this verse this same verse he says he made his ways known to moses then moses went and the children of israel saw the act so he told moses stretch forth the rod over the red sea the sea parted the children of israel didn't know what moses did for the sea to part so the next one is the ways of god the lowest that is the acts of god then the ways of god now watch something because i want to stay on these ways of god that will help us who's let's go back to psalm 84 verse 7 verse 6 are you following what i'm teaching remember i said there are the acts of god the miracles the demonstrations but God doesn't just want us to stay there. Those ones are for people outside so that they can know that God is with us. You shouldn't be running after them. Then there are the ways of God. God made known to Moses his ways. Now, go to Psalm 84. Go to verse 5, please. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. In whose heart are the ways, not the acts? That's the things you will do to see the acts, the miracle. God is going to put the rod of power in your heart and in your hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look at God's will. That thy way. Not your act. Your way may be made known upon the earth and thy saving held among all nations. Remember Jesus said, I am the way. So God wants us to know the ways, his ways. So that we can do the act. When you see rain falling, when you see blessing flowing, those are the acts. He wants us to know his ways. He wants to reveal his ways so that we can make rain. Now, the first condition, and then I'll close here because it's quite a bit. Are you getting something? How many of us really want to know the first condition for the ways of God? So that everywhere you go, you'll be a miracle. That's my joy. That's my joy. You don't have to call pastor. You know what to do. You take the things taught and keep it. Do it. You produce this. You command the same level of result. And God is glorified. Many people are already doing that. Do I have a testimony? Yeah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to know the ways of God. Look at the first condition. Remember I said Psalm 103 verse 7. He made his ways known to Moses. But his act to the children of Israel. His ways. How this miracle is worked, only Moses knew. But the children of Israel, it was like magic. The number one condition, you want to know God's ways, meekness. Meekness. What is meekness? God reveals his ways only to the meek and the lowly in heart. Now, this Moses that God made his ways known to, watch how he was described in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. One of the most anointed men in the Bible or human beings that ever lived, Moses. God said concerning Moses, he said, other prophets, I speak to them in dreams. But this one, I speak to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. In a way, Moses was God's friend. That means God can just leave heaven and come and be hanging out with Moses. Then showing him his ways. The miracles Moses did were awesome. Not, he was not just the lawgiver. He was the one that saw the rock following them and God told him, hit it with your staff. From there, water came out. Numbers 12, 3. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Not just meek. He, he added very to his own. The meeker you are, the higher you rise in the ways of God. Now, show us what meekness is. 
but I want us to get this. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which are upon the face of the earth. That's why he knew the ways of God. He was very meek above all those that are on the earth. What is meekness? I like defining things by giving an example. You want to understand what is meekness? Go to Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. And then we'll read Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The thing you are facing, there is a way of God about it. When you get that way of God, you will find out it is the highway. But you can't get that way of God until you meet this condition. Being meek. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. To the meek. The spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is upon me. He has empowered me, but not to preach to everybody. Because not everybody will receive. Only to those who are meek. Now, pastor, where are you going? Go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Lord Jesus quoted the scripture. Look at how he put the meek. And that will give us an insight into what it means to be meek. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The same scripture the Lord Jesus was quoting. Look at what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The materially poor, no sir. Those who are poor in spirit. Who come to God and say, I don't know anything. No. Help me. How do we get this done? Those who are teachable. That's the character, the major characteristic of a meek person, being teachable. Being teachable. The gospel profits those who are meek. The gospel is not just what they preach and you get born again. That's it. That's number one. It's the power of God also unto salvation to save you in anything you're facing. So if you approach it with a meek heart, God will show you his ways and say, this is the way to do this thing. But if you come and fool, he will send you away empty. That's where many people are not getting it. Lack of meekness. You can't correct them. You can't teach them. They know everything. Even if you have heard it, hear it again. There's a reason God is making you to hear it again. Hear it again. Hear it again. Hear it and hear it with hunger. With thirst. Come to church panting. Their scriptures I've read hundred times. Every time I go with them with the oil of meekness, with the light of meekness, God show me there is something. I, I know, I know, I know what pastor is preaching. I mean, I know, I mean, I mean in the Hebrew version, the, I know I have the Holy Spirit. You will remain there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Only the meek will God reveal his ways to the poor in spirit not materially poor only the poor in that means in the realm of the kingdom of God look at the first beatitude of the Lord Jesus Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God because in the kingdom of God you know the ways of God every earthly challenge has a supernatural solution but you won't get it until it's revealed to you. And the first condition God demands is meekness. Being teachable. I pray that this will be your portion today. Amen. That from today, you, you will not confuse or deceive or stagnate yourself in the name of Jesus. The meek are the ones also that will inherit the earth. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. 
the, 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 people are saying you are, you are a fool you don't know where you're going just be following God yes Lord yes Lord he's a foolish man yes Lord do this yes Lord uh, uh, you're following them to do. yes Lord look at it the Lord Jesus speaking blessed are the meek for they shall inherit not heaven no, the earth while you're still alive answering yes Lord what do you want me to do Lord my heart is open Lord God is giving them because he's showing them his ways now, what could have divided the Red Sea? There was nothing that was divided. But God showed Moses what to do. Stretch forth your rod. I will walk it. The children of Israel saw the Red Sea divide. But they didn't know how it was worked. Only Moses had God. So you come to a place that is a Red Sea, you go to God. I don't know how to solve this issue. You go desperately to God. God, if you don't help me, I don't have any help. Then he will tell you one instruction. You do that, the Red Sea part. People will be saying, ah, how can this small boy, this small girl, ah, this one, there is nothing. They are not educated now to do it. It is the ways of God, though, but he reveals it only to who? The meek. Look at another strong reason why we should be meek before we inherit substance from God. Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 21. I hope you're getting something from this. Look at what God said. Jeremiah sent the prophet to speak to these people. He said, I speak to thee in thy prosperity but you said I will not hear. This had been thy manner from thy youth. You do not obey my voice. That's why David, because of meekness, he said in Psalm 30 verse 6, he said, in my prosperity, I've said I will not be moved. That's why God could correct him when he sinned. You know, there are people God will not correct. If God can't correct you, he can't give you. When Nathan came to confront him about what his sin he committed, as a king, he would have told them, cut off his head. Because he was a meek man. He said, wow, I've sinned against God. Many of us have not gotten to that level. I pray today you get there. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So the number one condition, if you want to be a rainmaker, a rainmaker is the one in the wilderness, in a dry season, in famine. You want to be a rainmaker? You want to know the ways of God, how to bring forth rain. I'm not talking of rainmaker, the one they do in villages and concord water and all those. It's not water. Those ones, they rain and they stop. Rainmaker brings the early rain. That's six months, it's raining. Latter rain, it's still raining. Things are springing up. Not that people want to do ceremony. They go and come. It's not the one I'm teaching, no. Did you hear what I'm saying? You know, you go to villages, you want to do ceremony. Some people will come. If you don't give us money, you will not do it. If you give us money, you will do it. Then you settle them. And then they will hold the rain. It's not the one I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you the one that you make rain to fall that will bring forth new things in your life. Bring forth new things in your destiny. Cause things to come to a fruition. Make you do the impossible. That's what I'm teaching you. God says the first con the way to do it is that I must have access to your heart and that if you are not meek in the heart I will not show you my ways because you know why you need to be meek because some of the instructions God would give you you may see them as humiliating but that's why your deliverance is in. amen I think this first point I, I just feel led to stop you by God's grace in the second service we will there are two other ones we'll look at them in the second service I want you to check your life are you really teachable is there any place you're resisting God you're being stiff-necked you're not uncircumcised in the heart The meek always has a hunger and a thirst for God. Always has this hunger and thirst for his word. 
You know, anything you desire, you can't be offended pursuing it. Anything you desire, you can't be offended pursuing it. Let me repeat myself. Anything you desire, you can't be offended pursuing it. The Lord Jesus, after people left him in John chapter 6, a lot of people left. He turned to Peter and the disciples and said, ah, are you, what are you people still doing? Didn't you live with others? Peter told him, where else are we going to? We can't be offended following you. Why? Because we desire you. You're the desire of our hearts. It's not about the money. It's not about being apostles. It's not about people hating us miracles. No, it is you. Anything or anyone you desire, you cannot be offended pursuing it. I remember when I used to cut my wife before I cut her. Nothing she did offended me because I desired her. I still desire her. Cannot be offensive to you. I want you to pray one prayer that will help you. I want you to ask God to give you a desire for him like never before. Some of us have it, but I want you to genuinely ask God. I want a desire for Jesus. It is, I want you to put that desire for him. Because if I desire him, I can't be offended at his word, at his instructions. Can you pray for yourself for that? Lord, give me a desire. Like never before for you. Lord Jesus, give me a desire for you. Please cry out to the Lord. He will give you as you pray. Lord, give me a desire for you.
Let's worship him. Let's stand and worship him. So The next prayer point we are going to take whatever is an impossible situation now God will confirm this message in your life now close your eyes and focus on God just close your eyes and focus on him wherever you are close your eyes don't be distracted something is happening right now I want you to ask the Lord open my eyes and show me your way concerning this I am facing. Open simple prayer points. Open my eyes and show me your way. Make known to me your way concerning this issue, concerning this challenge. Now say that prayer with all of your heart, all eyes closed, because it's the eyes of the spirit we want God to open. He made his ways known to Moses. He made his ways known to Moses. He made his ways known to Moses. Whatever is that issue, that earthly issue, that impossibility, it has a divine solution. I want you from the depth of your heart, from the sincerity of your soul, and ask the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes and show me your way show me your own way concerning this specific issue be specific any issue you're facing whatever issue that has defied science defied human wisdom defied all known possibilities ask the lord to open your eyes whatever is a red sea there is a god way through it father open my eyes you need something to grow. You need an expectation to be met. Sincerely ask him. Just pour out your heart like water. Whatever is the issue. Lord open my eyes to see your way. Please pray, pray. He made his ways known to Moses. Then Moses demonstrated his acts, his miracles, his power, his glory to the public. Lord, open my eyes to see. There is a God way concerning this. Wherever you are in a dry place, in a wilderness, there is a God way to bring forth rain. Open the eyes of my heart to see. Open the eyes of my heart to understand. Make known your way to me, O Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and received. Please, all eyes closed still in the mood of prayer. Before I close, before I give this announcement and we close, I have one more thing to say concerning that prayer. But I want to pray for that one person. You are not born again. You don't know Jesus. You've not made him your Lord and Savior. Or you did that and backslided. God wants you home. He has better things in store. You're here on online. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Put your hand on your heart and I'll pray for you. You want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You want to be in this kingdom. 
where we see and do things by God, not by human wisdom. Put your hand on your heart and I'll pray for you. Wherever you are here, physically, online, you may be the reason God made this Sunday possible. He wants you. You have suffered enough. Don't be ashamed. Here online, put your hand on your heart and say this word boldly after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and on the third day you were raised from the dead that I may be made right with God. Today, I confess you Jesus Christ as Lord and receive you into my heart as my Savior. Lord Jesus, make your home in my heart. Thank you for receiving me in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Now I want to pray for you. Father, as many who have prayed this prayer, I ask from you three things for them. Number one, thank you for granting them now grace, the power to live as your sons in the name of Jesus. Number two, your word says that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. This same joy they have brought to heaven bring the he the joy of heaven into their lives in the name of jesus and then number three oh lord from today forward let their eyes be open to your ways among the people that gave their life today you are raising seers raising prophets in the name of jesus i thank you because it's done in jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed and received. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big, big clap offering somebody? Not to a pastor, but to the Lord. Give him a big, big clap offering. Now, before we close, just a quick one. I, I, I know what I'm doing when I told you to pray. That God will open your eyes to see his way. You may not have received it in this service. But I am decreeing that this week you will see that God's way out of that issue clearly. Amen. It may be in the dream. It may be when you are eating. Wherever it is, you will see it. Amen. And what you see will never leave you for the rest of your life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, this week is declared unto you the week of his garments. As the dew of Hermon and the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For here in Hermon Christian Center, the Lord has commanded the blessing over us, even life forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are with us all the days of our lives. We are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you this week and give you his peace and his perfection. I decree over your life that only that which is glorious is spoken concerning you. Now, go into this week and do only exploits. Return with the spoils of war. Return with good reports. Return with only testimonies. The Holy Spirit says, you tell you, go and make rain. Go and make rain. Give the Lord a clap of rain, rain makers. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Congratulate three people. Now you are a rainmaker.